Okay, uh, had a chance to watch the film. Obviously, extremely disappointing loss. Um, extremely disappointing, right? Unacceptable um, to, you know, go in. We thought we, had, thought we were ready to play a, a good football game against a good team, and, and we didn't, right? The core of the problem is we got to find a way to score more points. We got to get better in every area, um, offense, defense, and special teams. Obviously, primary focus on offense, score more points. I do believe in our team, right? I mean, that has not wavered um, and will not waver. Um, nobody can predict the future. Nobody can make guarantees. I'm not going to try to do either. Uh, all I can tell you is I got a lot of confidence in our team and our players and our coaches. Um, also wanted to, to note that we are going to make a significant change uh, to the starting lineup. Um, we are going to, we are going to elevate Sam to be the starting quarterback, extremely difficult decision, obviously given the, respect and admiration that we have for Matt Ryan and, you know, what he's done and what he's brought here. Um, you know, he is a pro's pro. This guy is, this guy is special, special, special. And, you know, we all, we know right at the quarterback position that it's not our poor production on offense is not on one person. It's not on Matt Ryan. Um, but we also know as Matt and I talked it through, hey, as head coach and quarterback, as head coach, ultimately it doesn't matter. I'm judged on wins and losses. Quarterbacks judged on points and, you know, and production and turnovers. That's, we understand that's how it is in this league. And so um, Matt will be a pro. He, you know, he, I will say this, uh, as you guys saw, or, or maybe saw, he did get banged up in the game. He does have a grade two, uh, grade two um, shoulder separation. Uh, and so we'll not practice this week. We'll be inactive. Um, Nick will be number two. Um, and But Matt is committed to helping this team in every way he can. He's got a lot of years of experience. You always got to stay ready. You never know. This is a funny league. So I um, still believe Matt's going to help us get to where we want to go in whatever role that is. Excited for Sam and the opportunity this presents for him. Um, we've always thought from day one that Sam had some kind of special sauce. It's, he's continued to show it. I've been particularly impressed with Sam this year in practice. Uh, once the season has started, the look he's given on scout team, the quality of his throws, um, the way he's commanding himself out there, just the total package. So uh, just feel like at this point, that's the best decision for our team going forward. I'll open it up. All right, Nate Atkins. Frank, just on that uh, line of thinking, was this sort of a conversation you guys have been having for a few weeks about, you know, evalu evaluating that position? And have you been thinking about a change or what kind of was the moment that, that pushed you to that point of where you, you want to make a massive change like this? Yeah, I mean, every week is evaluated on its own. Then there's a right, the cumulative and collective effect of it. Um, you do with a player like Matt because of his because of his legacy and history of what he's done and all that he's accomplished. You know, you want to measure twice and and cut once. You want to you want to make sure you make this move that it is truly the best thing for the team, and uh, you don't want to rush into this kind of a judgment. So, um, I don't think we did that. Um, it wasn't like we were sitting here. Well, let's wait till he throws an interception and then we're going to make a switch. Um, it was the exact opposite. It was for me. It was. You know, this guy's going to lead us where we want to go um, and have that belief and confidence. Um, at some point, you know, the head coach, you have to make hard decisions. You have to work through these things. And, um, you know, they're not easy, easy decisions to be made. James Boyd. Frank, I know you announced this to us in, in, in the media just now, but did you have that conversation with Matt and, and Sam, like, Overnight or early this morning, like how did that kind of go down? And did you did, what did you know leaving that stadium yesterday? Like QB two, I mean QB one is going to be Sam Ellinger. No, no, didn't didn't know. Um, you know, watched the tape coming home. Watched, got home, drove into the office, watched the tape again. Um, so no, the decision wasn't made um, right away. Uh, then. This morning, I had those conversations with all three of those guys um, this morning and right, obviously hard conversations. But the thing with Matt is he's such a pro. He, he made the conversation easy. You know, I mean, it, of course, it's not easy, but he made it easier um, in, in just the way he is. Kevin Bowen. If Frank, I've got to just to clarify, if Matt was healthy, would he still be the, the number two or number three, I guess, behind Sam? Uh, he's not healthy, so 
I, I don't have to make that decision. Okay. And then the other one, um, are you planning for Sam to be the starter the rest of the season? Yes. Right now the move is for Sam to be the starter the rest of the season. Zach Kiefer. Frank, would, would this have, let's say Matt wasn't, I'm just trying to clarify, was this made regardless of Matt's shoulder situation? Was that this was going to be the move with whether he was healthy or not? That is true. This, that we were going to, yeah, the, the shoulder injury is real, but this, move was this move was going to be made uh either way and then to follow up um i know jim and chris and you guys meet every week and i know that's informal and i know that jim usually doesn't interfere on personnel decisions has he been more vocal than usual about the quarterback situation this year i mean you know mr ursa has been incredibly supportive yeah you're right zach we do talk every week talk in the locker room after the game usually either talk that night by phone or sometimes in the next day or two did have a conversation, you know, with both he and Chris, um, late last night, um, you know, for an hour or so just talking everything through, you know, um, obviously he's right. Uh, again, Mr. Ursay, as I've said many times, and you guys know longer than, uh, better than me, cause you've been here longer than me is you got a lot of wisdom, a lot of good counsel, you know, it was, you know, we like to, certainly he his vote is always going to carry. Uh, it's a one man crew in that respect. But what I appreciate about him is that this is a collective decision. You know, this is a collect. This is let's talk this through. Um, you know, let's talk this through. Um, he might lead the way in certain ways, but um, it's really uh, owner, GM, head coach talking through a magnitude, a decision of this magnitude. Joel Erickson. Uh, Frank, you guys committed a significant, made a fin significant financial commitment to Matt Ryan in the offseason. And, you know, Mr. Ursay said that in the offseason, they could see him being the starter for three or four years. Um, g given all that, uh, what, what you guys said about Ryan and, and the financial commitment, is it frustrating that you're at this point already to be switching to Sam Ellinger? No, it's frustrating. And, you know, two things I have to say to that question, Joel, is first of all, it just shows Mr. Ursay's commitment to winning, right? He's, he's committed to winning championships and anything short of winning a championship isn't going to be good enough. Okay. So that comes for, no one's exempt from that, not the head coach, not anybody. Right. So he's going to make the decisions that he thinks is best for this team and this organization to win championships, you know? And so, um, you know, and, and that's where it all starts and finishes. Now, and what was the first part of your question, Joel? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, it's probably not worded very well, but the financial commitment. Oh, okay. It was yeah, supposed gotcha. to be a two-year plan with Ryan and feels early to abandon that. Yeah, the other thing, and no, that's fair. Good point. Um, th this is another point that needs to be made crystal clear. And I told this to Matt, right? Hey, Matt, we did not hold up to our end of the bargain here, right? I mean, you know, you we you came here and we promised you uh, one of the a, a top NFL rushing game, and we promised you uh, great protection. Um, and we haven't really, as an offense, delivered on that. And that really starts with me, right? So that's basically you know my message to Matt is that I we I thought we thought the marriage of Matt Ryan and his history with our running game. He's been he's had 14 years of incredibly productive, great quarterback play with, with great play action. So we just thought there was going to be a natural marriage there. It made a lot of sense. It just, you know, given our crazy quarterback scenarios over the last five years, um, it, it wasn't a move of desperation. It wasn't a move of, oh, well, let's just grab the next thing. No, I mean, it was a well thought out, does this seem right? Nobody's just, oh, who's, well, who's available? Uh, who's throwing the most touchdowns? Let's get that guy. No, this was, this decision was made based off of watching the tape on him, seeing he's been productive in play action. We can provide him a great running game, give him good protection. He's older, you know, so it doesn't run around a lot, but we can give him good protection. Um, and as an offense, I think we're making strides to that, but we're not there yet. Stephen Holder. Uh, Frank, so um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, yes. sorry. 
Uh, so where is um, where is Sam in terms of you know just preparedness for this? I mean, this wasn't something you were planning. Um, your offense does it have to change? I, mean, I don't know. Just where where is he at, and and how ready is he for this? Given that he's he's really only played in the preseason. Yeah, I mean it's it's a big step, but we think he's ready. And this guy's special. Um, you all know it. Everybody knows it. Just talk to anybody. Just anybody walks in this. Anybody in that locker room. You know, and uh, we're, we're fortunate to have a guy like, you know, we three really three quarterbacks like that. But Sam, he's got that about him. He carries himself in a way he he plays, he practices in a way um, he'll be ready. He'll be ready. I mean, is he going to have some growing pains? Of, of course. Is he going to make mistakes? Of course, he's going to make mistakes. Um, but I think Sam will Sam will make plays. Sam is going to make plays. He's he's proven that everywhere he's been. And, and we believe that's what he's going to that's what he's going to do for our offense. He's going to make plays. And just a quick follow up, his mobility, how does that change things for you from a play calling standpoint or emphasis or anything like that? Yeah, I mean. You know, anytime um, a quarterback. You know, you, you always have this adage sometimes. Well, not always. Sometimes you have if you have a quarterback. If you have a quarterback who can who can scramble and, and get out of, and get out into the open. You know, if you say, if you can just get us one or two a game, get us one, one or two convert for third down conversions where you scramble, you know, you get one or two a game. Those are huge plays. And Sam, as we all know, we've all witnessed, he has the capability to do that. And sometimes in a game, it's those one or two third down conversions on a scramble that can make the difference in a game. Not always. You can win the game from the pocket. You guys know, I believe that. We've seen it. Matt's won a lot of games from the pocket in his career so on and so forth. A lot of guys have won games from the pocket. But when you're a guy that has the ability that Sam has and you can make those plays, and by the way, I think on top of it, you know, he's good in the pocket. I think he's continued. I've seen that more this season than I did even last year, that uh, I believe he can be good from the pocket. So, Stephen, we can still stay true to some of the stuff that we like, but we can do a little bit more in some of the movement stuff. All right, we'll go two more. Greg Doyle. Frank, um, nine days ago, Sam wasn't good enough to be your backup quarterback, and now he's your starter. It looks like – it just looks to me, hell, like you guys don't know what you're doing. Did you not see what Sam was? Like all of a sudden he's good enough to start? Where was he six weeks ago, five weeks ago, four weeks ago to be the backup? Yeah, I don't think you were listening, Greg. I don't think you were listening because we made it clear that when we um, – that based off the preseason that the two guys had foals – and, and Sam, that we were extremely happy with both of them. And we'd be thrilled with either one of them, right? I mean, they, were, they both had great preseasons. Sam had a particularly good preseason. You know, Nick brought a long track record as a, you know, as a great backup, um, you know, and that we still value very highly and did a lot of good things on the practice field. And as far as Sam was, con as far as Sam was concerned, we have continued to, you know, we have continued to, quote, unquote, sing his praises and felt like it was always 2A and 2B, if you will. So feel like this is exactly why we wanted all three of these guys on the roster. All right, Joel Erickson, last question. Uh, Frank, you guys in, in training camp, Matt and Nick took most of the reps um, in terms of 11 on 11, that kind of thing. Has Sam been getting more practice reps, you know, now that you guys are in the regular season in terms of getting him ready to do this? Yes. Yes, he has. And he's looked particularly good, particularly good. In fact, I just told Chris last week, uh, there was one day he was, he was running scout, he was just a scout team, but this is, this is just a testament to Sam, but really this is what we tell players all the time. Every play is evaluated. Every, you're being evaluated coaches, players, head coaches, uh, position coaches, player, you're being evaluated every second of every day when you're in this building. That's just the way it works. I mean, when you're in the most competitive industry. And I told Chris Ballard last week, Sam had one of the best weeks of practice I've ever seen him have. He made four or five, uh, what I would say to you are elite throws. I mean, elite big time throws down the field, um, threading coverage, putting the ball right where it should be. Um, those things don't go unnoticed. 
Um, those things don't go unnoticed. Those things factor into the decision. And he's continued to do that this year.